Hey guys, I'm Josh from Josh's Snake Catching and Relocation. Um, today we're, we're going to start the first episode off with the snake we catch most, which is the coastal carpet python. So this segment is going to be called Educational Tuesday, I think. I think that's what I'm going to go with. So every Tuesday we're going to upload a video on different... What are you doing? On different species. And uh, it just so happens that we decided to do the first episode on the carpet python. It only seems natural to do so. It's acting quite weird. Wait, get off my thumb. So these guys have 80 odd teeth. They do eat anything with fur and feathers. Um, unfortunately, that means little pets too, like guinea pigs and chickens and stuff like that. They also are a constrictor, so what he's doing to my hand right now, he is constricting me a little bit. They come in a range of different colors and patterns. Come on. Incredible core strength as well. That's how they constrict their prey. It's very, very tough. Oh, okay, so we've just swapped hands. They're incredible climbers. One, you don't bite my thumb. They're incredible climbers. Um, you'll see these guys literally climbing up brick walls, up trees. Um, anything that they can wrap themselves around, they will climb up. My hand's gonna go purple soon. One in three houses, the stats behind it also has one of these guys in the roof. Why are you carrying on like this? So very, very common. Um, they also can lay, a big female can lay about 30 eggs and I've seen clutches as little as eight. Almost 100% success rate in the wild as well, which is good, same as incubation. Uh, they don't, there's only, uh, I think the, the stats behind it is only 2% make it to adulthood unfortunately due to um, us humans. Now that was very blunt when I said just us humans. Obviously cats and dogs are a big cause of killing snakes too. Uh, also birds, so it's not just humans, um, and that 2% survival rate does come from obviously humans killing them, dogs killing them, birds killing them, and cats killing them. Humans kill them when they're babies, thinking they're brown snakes because they're quite caramel in colour. Uh, if I remember, I'll chuck up a photo of a baby carpet python, just so you guys can see how brown, brown babies are. You're really not cooperating. So yeah, what he's doing now is, is um, yeah, just constricting my arm. Hopefully he doesn't think I'm a food item because I don't really want to get nibbled on today. You all right? What are you doing? Dogs and cats aren't their first choice of food. I get asked this all the time. Is it going to eat my cat? Is it going to eat my dog? The possibility is obviously there. It can happen, but um, it is on the slimmer side. It's generally when cats and dogs cats and dogs and mess with them um, so you know natural hunters fox terrier stuff like that they'll go and try and attack them and then the snake obviously doesn't have a voice it doesn't have arms and legs so uh, the only way to tell it to back off is with its mouth unfortunately come on you got to start unwrapping yourself these guys have been recorded to grow up to four meters as well um, I personally haven't seen one that size but that's just what online says Average around here is going to be between two to three meters. A full grown adult, if you get bit, you are going to get a lot of teeth in you. I have piercings, I have nose piercings, I have lip piercings. It's like getting a, a bunch of piercings at once. It can hurt quite a bit, so it's not a bite I recommend. He's really, really not sure on me. Oh. Oh. Come on, what are you doing? You were so friendly. You just changed.
So for some reason he thinks I'm food right now. I'm not too sure why. He's not really acting um, aggressive. It's more of a food response, so he's just quite hungry. And uh, he's really scenting me out right now. They've also got heat pits on the side of their um, head. I'll see if I can grab a, oh yeah, camera, camera can grab a close up on, on the heat pits. Settle down. So the heat pits are used to sense out uh, warm prey, so it's like infrared uh, almost. They use that to sense out um, little rats, mice, birds, possums, uh, anything warm blooded, that's what they use to, to sense out. And they're incredible, they work from a really, really long distance. As you can see as well from the close up, they don't have ears so they can't hear what we're saying. You, you can scream at a snake and they, and they can't hear you. You alright? You settling down? We'll let you go, hey? I'm Josh from Josh's Snake Ash and Relocation. Thanks very much for tuning in to today's episode. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Oh, that sun's probably getting me. <coughs> hey guys, I'm Josh from Josh's Snake Ash and Relocation. Um, how should I start it? What are we calling it actually? I don't know. Educational Tuesday, that'll do.